Hello, this is Richard Jacobs with the Finding Genius podcast, now part of the Finding Genius Foundation. And our guest today is Stephen Hayes. He's a foundation professor, part of the behavioral analysis program in the Department of Psychology at University of Nevada. And we're going to talk about um, some of the work he's been doing and helping people uh, overcome various angst that they have, I guess is the way I can put it. So, Steve, thanks for coming. Glad to be here. Yeah, tell me about a bit about your history and about your current work. Well, I'm a clinical psychologist, but also a basic researcher in language and cognition. I'm an old guy and uh, headed into retirement soon from the university, but not from the work, which uh, you know has a 40-year arc to it. And the real focus of it, what I'm best known for, is bringing kind of acceptance, mindfulness, values uh, into the conversation and a more process-based focus. Uh, in part for the reasons you were just talking about, that uh, nobody could learn all those protocols, but maybe we could dig down to the common processes that make a difference, that move you into cul-de-sacs or put you on the right road to prosperity, and focus on that and all the different ways that evidence shows can be moved. But I started that personal journey uh, just inside my academic work and then really got serious with it when I developed a panic disorder and went through a a three-year spiral into hell. Uh, there's a TEDx. People can see what it was like and what, and I finally hit bottom and, and inside hitting bottom found that uh, although I didn't have a way out, I did have a way in and that there was a way forward that was 180 degrees in the opposite direction of where I was going. And that instead of trying to run, hide, fight, and wrestle with anxiety, it was my job to turn towards it, run towards it, inhale it, feel it, notice it, learn about it, learn from it, and uh, carry it with me towards a life worth living. And that's the combination of things that now 40 years later, and about 5,000 studies, so 800 randomized trials, and a lot of evidence, uh, we can distill down what was really important in that moment for me, but also in bringing this into the lives of people, is a small, really manageable set of skills called psychological flexibility. It only has six things in it, but I can summarize it in three, learning how to be more open, aware, and actively engaged in your life. And if you learn what those processes are, focus on them, learn how to move them and move them, life will unfold in a better way. And so that's what I'm up to. What do you think caused your uh, your anxiety? Like, And what, what solved it for you? Or at least got it to a manageable level? Well, I tell that uh, story and, and even some of the conversation, I'd be careful about causing the anxiety and manageable level because it kind of nominates the anxiety as the problem. The anxiety is not the problem. All of the emotions we feel, every single one, we pay money to produce. They all have use in our life. The issue is they get out of sync because there's a kind of a crash between these evolutionarily recent systems of verbal regulation and these ancient systems that go back half a billion years of learning to detect threat and through uh, association and operant classical conditioning, be able to bring that forward. And so we're kind of living out a pretty recent thing. It's only been going on for a couple hundred thousand, maybe a couple million years. We know it's in that range because the chimps don't do it. And that's 2.8 million years ago when we split off from that tree. So you know, I, we're, we're kind of prone to the problem because of that clash. But I tell the story in the TEDx talk how I was set up for it. I mean, I come by it honestly to a degree. My dad had an anxiety disorder and was an alcoholic. My mom had OCD and was depressed. But my particular sort of form of it showed up inside a horrific meeting in a a psychology department meeting when, as I say in my TEDx talk, I was watching full professors uh, fight in a way that only wild animals and full professors are capable of. And uh, why did that penetrate me so much? Well, I tell that story too, that it echoed back to parts of my history that I had suppressed. I kind of remembered them, but I didn't really appreciate how deeply they had penetrated me of watching domestic violence in my home. 